This is the Peace Arch, standing near the westernmost edge of the U.S.-Canadian border, 30 miles south of the Olympic City between Blaine and Washington State and Surrey, British Columbia. This was dedicated in 1921 to commemorate the treaty that ended the War of 1812 between the U.S. and Great Britain. Remember, Canada was a British colony. That was a long time ago, but the inscription on the arch sums up their relationship. May these gates never be closed. We share more than a long border, of course. No doubt a line can divide our joint stewardship of a treasure of natural riches from the Atlantic to the Pacific and back again. Shorelines, wild rivers and great lakes, vast forests and grasslands, precious ores buried in majestic mountains and wildlife everywhere from sea to shining sea. Canada and the United States share another unique quality there, immigrant nations. Destinations for people around the world who long for political freedoms, economic opportunity, and a long tradition of compassion. Our two nations have the largest trading relationship in the world. One and a half billion dollars transacted every day. The two-way trade at the Ambassador Bridge between Detroit and Windsor alone equals all on American exports to Japan. And we're so comfortable as neighbors. 200 million, 200 million people across the common border every year. Canada, some may be surprised to learn, is America's largest oil supplier and the United States is Canada's number one tourist destination. In a snapshot, Canada is a huge country, second largest in the world next to Russia, but its population is only about a tenth of size of the United States. 34 million, split into 10 provinces and three territories. 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the U.S. border, residing in world-class cities, thriving farms, and smaller towns with good reason. Life in the Canadian North is only for the hardy. It is remote and oh so cold. The coldest day ever recorded in North America occurred in 1947 in Snag, Yukon. 81 degrees is not including windshield. Canadians are so generous, they share with us their brightest stars in music, comedy, acting, sports, and journalism. And if you're in a fight, you want the Canadians on your side. They were in World War II before we were. They were there on D-Day, in the air, and on the beaches. They've been America's most reliable partners in Afghanistan, and it's been costly in pain. Now when Canada loses a warrior in that distant land, the nation causes and honors the fallen, along with his told the highway of heroes outside of Toronto. Even their diplomats have been there for us. In 1980, a year before the conclusion of the Iranian hostage crisis, six American embassy personnel would escape from Iran in an operation organized by Canadian Ambassador Ken Taylor. The United States is thanking Canada for rescuing those six American diplomats from Iran. Taylor hit the Americans after the U.S. Embassy was stormed, created fake Canadian passports, then flew the Americans out of Tehran with above this cover story. The six in disguise as a mod-looking Hollywood film crew allegedly researching a prospective sci-fi flick. Now all these years later, Taylor has admitted he was formerly working for the CIA, and if the Iranians had discovered he was an American spy, he would have been in big, big trouble. In our darkest hours, Canada has been with us. On September 11th, as the United States shut down its aerospace, Canada instituted Operation Yellow Ribbon, landing 239 U.S.-bound flights for 33,000 passengers at 17 different Canadian airports. And then, amid the uncertainty that followed, entire communities housed and fed. Those thousands of passengers for days afterward. In the long history of sovereign neighbors, there never has been a relationship as close, productive, and peaceful as the U.S. and Canada. We share a continent and so much more. Speaking before the Canadian Parliament, President Kennedy summarized the relationship this way. Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economic has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Those from nature have so joined together, said Kennedy. Let no man put us under. Of course, there are some distinct differences in the culture. 
the American fans of these games will be unproven. The stars and stripes at every opportunity in chanting USA, USA. The Canadian Prime Minister had to go before Parliament yesterday and urge Canadians who engage in what he called an uncharacteristic outburst of patriotism, saying don't be afraid to wave those flags. We'll apologize to the world for our immodesty. Well, hello everyone and welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio and it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time here. So hope you're having a fantastic day or evening or in between, whatever it is, whenever it is that you are listening or watching, watching us. And I was planning actually to do this yesterday. So the plan was to either do um, after hours or to get a podcast up and an episode up by 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time yesterday because yesterday um, was Canada Day. So Canada celebrated its 157th birthday. We are young. And um, so I had a lot to do. Um, I did a couple of things that I had already posted and in the morning, as you folks know, my, my um, raw commentary, because one of the first things I saw in the morning when I woke up, I was just going through, you know, my um, alerts and stuff like, like, like that. And then I see this thing and I, I, I clicked and I, then I, I just listened to that um, person um, saying what she was saying and it just sent me in a tizzy and I thought, don't, 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 don't. I was like, no, I'm going to just say what I want to say. I'm going to say it right now. So I, I did. And, and thank you all for <laughs> putting up with me. So I um, did that. Then there was other things I needed to get done. Um, and I thought, all right, I'm going to get this episode up. But I started to feel really, really tired in the afternoon. So I thought um, it was late afternoon. I was like, okay, I, I still have time to put everything together and I'll just go take a quick nap. Like I just need like close my eyes for maybe 15, 30 minutes. So that's what I did. And of course I set, I set my alarm. I woke up at 2 a.m. So 2 a.m. in the morning, I, I woke up. And I was like, oh, okay. And I had my phone in my hand and I thought, oh, I am so sure I set the alarm. I guess it didn't go off. So I got up, I, I, I put my phone down. I'm heading to just, you know, wash my face. And I was like, what, what time is it? So I grabbed the phone again and I see it's like 2.10. <laughs> 
I was like, what? <laughs> it's 2.10 a.m. What happened? So I, I guess my body needed to sleep. But the most interesting thing is that I did set the alarm. So the alarm went off. And I usually keep my, my, my phone so that I actually have to like physically get up. Not get off the bed, but, but get up. And to, to reach where, where the phone is. So I basically did that while I was sleeping, I guess. Took the alarm off and just went back to bed. Just went back to sleep. And didn't wake up until the time I woke up. Oh, well, I'm well rested. Let's put it that, that way. So the, 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 the intro that you saw was um, the, the original. It was done by um, Tom Broca when um, uh, NBC, NBC News. When Vancouver was hosting the Winter Olympics um, years ago and i remember when i saw the original and with the music and the thing and the experience and it was basically done to explain canada to americans that's how it was sort of marketed and i will tell you it actually moved a lot of us um yes i cried yes 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 so if anyone is asking yes and i think quintessentially it captures the essence of the relationship between Canada and the U.S. It is, I don't want to, no, it's, it's, it's not a love-hate relationship because we, 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 we get along, um, thank goodness, but every time something happens in the U.S., you know, we're like the anxiety-ridden little brother <laughs> that it, <laughs> we're just like, okay, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't vote for him. Don't vote for him. Don't vote. Oh, no. Right? Or if, if, if some policies, especially when we have such a great trading relationship, but, you know, when policies come out and, and they start saying only by American, we're like, yeah, we agree with that, but we sell you a lot of stuff. And we buy a lot of stuff from you folks too. <laughs> so, so, so you can't just say that. But look, listen, we're going to start discussing politics um, here. But I thought Tom Brock did an ex excellent job, it's such an amazing job. What I will do is I'll post a link to the original video and you can watch that and see like it's, it's quite emotive. It's actually quite emotional. Um, well, I got very emotional anyways, uh, and, um, I wasn't trying to copy that exactly the way it is. I just needed the, the um, script and just, just, just show, um, show it. Um, so yeah, 157 years, Canada, <sighs> it's a privilege and an honor and to call this place home. I, I, I love it. It's, it's, it, it, it's made me into the person I am today and proud to say I am Canadian. And the funniest thing was I remember when we were heading to Europe and this was, I was in, I was in high school at the time and um, everyone showed up, you know, I was recent immigrant to Canada. And everyone showed up with their bags and stuff. And uh, they had maple leaf patches and badges and stuff just sewed on on their um, sacado, on their, on their, on their knapsacks and, 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 and um, yeah. And I was like, what, why did I, did I miss something? Like everyone has like the, the, the maple, like the flag. And I'm looking around going, shoot. Oh, shoot, I missed that. Maybe I missed that day and there was an information thing or something. So I went to our professor, or, sorry, our teacher that's like, uh, Mr. So-and-so. I was like, did I miss like a day or something where everyone got like the flag, like the badge flag thing to put on their, on their bags? And he looks at me and he's like, Antonio, 
it's very Canadian to do. When you travel to Europe, we all will, everyone puts it. I said, but I didn't know that. I said, can I have one? He goes, no, you have to get your own. <laughs> the school doesn't give it to you. And then I learned that to distinguish, not distinguish, to, to, to yeah, I guess the word is distinct, distinguished. Um, so be, people know and my beautiful Americans, <laughs> don't take this as an offense. I think some of you already know this because some of you actually <laughs> do exactly the same, the same, the same thing. Um, because Americans have a reputation, right? So, and because we are so close to each other and <laughs> we have similar accents, people many times confuse us and think we are Americans. So in order to distinguish ourselves and say, no, we're not Americans, we are Canadians, um, one of the easiest way is to have the Canadian flag on your, um, on your, on your, on your knapsack. I can't speak. So, and, um, and people actually, because they're like, oh, you're Canadian. Okay. You guys are nice. So some Americans, because I've met some of them, uh, some of my travels to Europe, uh, I'll see them with, you know, the maple leaf and the NASDAQ. I'll be on a train or something. And when I see the maple leaf and NASDAQ, I'm like, okay, a fellow Canadian, I'll, you know, if I'm in the same compartment or whatever with the person, I'd be like, hey, hi, I'm from, I'm from so-and-so. And I said, where, where, where are you from? Um, in Canada. And <laughs> I've had it many a times. The person looks and they're like, um, I'm actually from New York, man. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll be like, I'm actually not Canadian. I just did that because people treat me nicer if I have the maple leaf on my head. Oh, it's too funny, too funny. It's just really great. Anyways, yes, yesterday was Canada the day. I just wanted to bring that to you. And um, the next thing uh, is a little bit more serious. So when we get back, I will give my... I, I, I don't know, maybe my final word on this whole <sighs> award thing. And I want to say thank you to all of you who listened to my little raw rant yesterday. I, I just was livid um, in the morning. And as much as I told myself not to do that, to actually sit down and get my thoughts together before I did that, I didn't. I just, <laughs> you folks know what I did. So, but yesterday I did put my thoughts together. I corrected, I redid it a little bit today. And, um, okay. I deserve that. I think I'm working to unlearn the belief that I am not enough that I am less important and less deserving. I understood that there was something sacred about sacrificing my own need or desire or truth even to make space for someone else's journey. I've placed so much value on other people's sense of joy and goodness and safety that I've been willing to sacrifice my own sense of joy and goodness and safety and I don't regret it. I think it's not wrong to care about how other people feel and want to do what's right for other people. I'm just learning to let myself be one of those people, right? To include myself. It's like I need to be as important as the other people I'm considering, that I deserve that. I well, I've had some time to gather my thoughts and hopefully be more eloquent in um, what I say than what I said yesterday. Um, and. I'll start by saying this. This this matter is is of grave concern. The relentless and unjust media campaign against Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. 
particularly in the light of Prince Harry's recent recognition by ESPN with the Pat Tillman Award. This situation exemplifies a dangerous trend in journalism that threatens not only the subjects of these stories, but the very fabric of our society. Prince Harry, through his tireless work with the Invictus Games Foundation, has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to supporting veterans and their families. The Invictus Games, now in its 10th year, has become a beacon of hope for countless servicemen and women around the world. Many veterans have attested that the games have quite literally saved their lives, providing a purpose and a path forward in their darkest hours. Yet, instead of celebrating this remarkable achievement, we find ourselves embroiled in a manufactured controversy. The recent article by Caroline Graham in the Daily, you know what, is a prime example of journalism that prioritizes sensationalism over truth, division over unity. Let me be clear. The Pat Tillman Award is not about comparing the sacrifices of individuals. It is about recognizing those who continue Pat Tillman's legacy of service, sacrifice, and impact. Prince Harry, through his decade-long commitment to veteran causes, embodies these values. The tactics employed by certain media outlets seeking out dissenting voices, amplifying minor criticisms, and deliberately misrepresenting facts are not just unethical, they're dangerous. They incite hatred, fuel division, and distort public perception. This goes far beyond the bounds of free speech or fair criticism. It is a calculated attempt to destroy reputations and undermine valuable humanitarian work. We must ask ourselves, what is the real cost of this relentless negativity? How many veterans might hesitate to seek help through programs like the Invictus Games because of this manufactured controversy? How much good work is being overshadowed by these baseless attacks? It's crucial to understand that the Pat Tillman Foundation, like many such organizations, relies on corporate sponsors strategic partners, and individual donors. By attempting to tarnish the reputation of an award recipient, these media attacks indirectly threaten the foundation's ability to carry out its vital mission. Look, we, we, cannot, we, can, we cannot just stand by idle as Journalism descends into a tool for personal vendettas and clickbait. We must demand better. We must insist on fair, balanced, and responsible reporting. We must celebrate those who dedicate their lives to serving others, regardless of their background or title. Look, Prince Harry's work with Invictus Games has touched thousands of lives. It has given hope to the hopeless, strength to the struggling, and a voice to those who felt silenced. 
This is the story we should be telling. This is the work we should be celebrating. I call upon all of you, journalists, readers, citizens, to reject this toxic brand of reporting that is so familiar in the UK. Demand facts, not sensationalism. Seek out multiple perspectives, not just the most controversial. Celebrate achievements, don't tear them down. To the British media that, and, and, and those who echo their sentiments, your relentless pursuit of Harry and Meghan continues to cross the line and each time you go even further. It's time to step back, reassess, and remember the true purpose of journalism, to inform, to enlighten, and to serve the public interest. But I doubt you would do that. Instead, you will coerce your motives and say, well, this is in the public interest. It's not driven by hate. Not at all. To Prince Harry. Oh, not emotional. On behalf of countless veterans and supporters around the world, Thank you. Your work matters. Your dedication, it inspires. And no amount of unwarranted criticism can diminish the positive impact you've had on so many lives. Let us move forward with empathy, with integrity, and with a commitment to truth. Let us be the change we wish to see in our media landscape. The stakes are too high. The potential for good is too great to do anything less. That's a son of Trinidad and Tobago. If there's one thing I am not doing is purchasing mangoes. You must know at least one person, a friend, a friend of a friend, a family member, a friend of a family member, who has or knows somebody who has a mango tree and is burdened by the amount of mango that is born, that is bored, barren, bared, every mango season. It's inexcusable to have to pay for mango in this country. The following was left for me by my landlord at a time after seeing me picking up mangoes from the drain. You see what I mean? People just giving away mangoes. Why I must buy mangoes? Just to put into context, it wasn't any random drain. It was my neighbor's drain. As a Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I love her. <laughs> I absolutely do. It just brings me joy. And mango is one of my favorite fruits. I love me a mango. So it, it, it's just, it was just sort of great. And, and mangoes are not cheap here, right? Uh, so her talking about never paying for a mango and they're all over and they're in the trees and stuff is just, I, I was just a little bit, send some over here. I, it used to just buy like one or two from the supermarket because they were, they were, they were quite pricey. And uh, my mom once said to me, she's like, no, 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 that's not what you do. She goes, buy them frozen. I said, why would I buy frozen, mother? <laughs> right? <laughs> and I said it like that too. Why would I buy frozen, mother? Because frozen is such a bad thing. And uh, she said, listen. <laughs> she goes, they, you actually get better value for the money you're paying. 
right? Because you, they actually take a couple of mangoes and it's all chopped up. The seed is taken out. So you get more of the mango itself. I'm like, oh, really? She's like, yes. What do you think are frozen mangoes? I said, I don't know. I thought they were like deficient mangoes or something. She's like, you, you're special sometimes. I said, I know. Thank you, mama. So, um, yeah, that is that. And I would love to get your feedback on what you think about my, my take on the whole award thing. Look, I didn't want to concentrate on um, Mary, um, um, the mom, or on M uh, Marie, um, the, the, the wife, because they have just been thrown into this, this mess. And this entire mess is created by the press. It's created by the tabloid press. It's created by UK press. And they're sort of like a virus, right? Just one of them have to mention something. And then it, it just spreads to every, every, everything else. I saw a picture, and I think this is a um, US-based tabloid. And it, it's just, I, I, I don't know how, how they can, right? They, 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 they're so void of, of any soul because you have to be void of any soul to do the things that they do. There was a picture in one of the um, articles I was reading because I was trying to read a couple more stuff to get, get, get a more balanced thought in, in my head. And she, so they have Mary holding what seems like a binder or a photo um, binder, hugging it basically, and giving giving a, a look towards a like, and she's against a wall, as if someone is coming to take her memories of her son away or take the photo. Away. It, it was just quite distasteful. Whoever took that picture, it it it, it just made my heart ache. I, I I do not, and I I will never understand the capacity of humans to inflict such pain and distress on others. And their, their faculties of not thinking, how is this affecting another person emotionally, mentally, and all of that, and not even thinking, well, I wouldn't want someone to treat my mother like that. I wouldn't want someone to bring this stuff up like this. And it, they, they, they're just these vessels of evil and you know i i i fear they're becoming this 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 power that and that that is why i'm, I'm one of the reasons i'm so you know fervent in 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 making sure that we dispel the things that they say that we defend as much as we can with the resources that we have um megan and harry because I've, I've, i'll say it again they are a symbol they're a strong one and these people are determined to use them as an example and to bring them down they're determined to destroy them. And we have to be steadfast and, and, and not, not, not allow these things to go by. You know, sometimes I hear people say, oh, don't, don't, not everything. And I don't, not everything I see or I hear, I, no, I, I don't, right? But I also believe that we can't stay in a bubble. We have to be able to know what is being said because this stuff is spread, it's spreading like a virus. And they are testing the waters more and more here in the US. I mean, they're in the US, I'm not in the US. To um, see how it's going to, who's gonna take it, who's gonna, who's gonna, who's going to um, repeat, right? Because a lot of these publications, they don't even check anything. They just create an article and say, well, you know, um, Carolyn, blah, 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 from the Daily, blah, 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 has said, blah, 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 blah. Well, what if Carolyn, blah, 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 was on, I don't know, some medication that was making her hallucinate, allegedly? Like, your publication, you have journalists, shouldn't you be checking to make sure, like, it's correct? 
anyways, I would love to have your your um, f your feedback and, and and commentary. I was going to actually mention to you folks. I I'm debating right now what I should or not. I'll, I'll tell you the story as quick as I can. So for some reason, ever so often, um, the algorithm sends me. I, in, in my feed, I get a lot of like Sussex and Royal Family channels, which number one excites me because as like many times I'm, I, I, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a new channel um, that I've never seen before or heard of before. And 99, actually I shouldn't say 99, 100% of the times, it's not a Sussex friendly channel. And I've been fooled because Many times they, 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 they sort of start out very nice and, 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 and then they take this, this turn. But I bring this to you because I, I, there is a sort of, you know, when, uh, the best analogy I can find right now is, you know, when salmon have to swim uphill, right? Um, sometimes that's how it feels. And I just want to say, because ever so often I, 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 need, to, I need to take like a breather. I, I can feel how heavy it actually all becomes. I wanted to just say it to, to each and every one of you, like, trust me, I know how some of us feel this stuff. We feel it in our skin. We feel it in, 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 in our pores. We feel it in our heart, our soul. Because for many of us, we've experienced that pain, the things that are similar, the innuendos, the, the name calling, the gaslighting, the untruths that are being told, the, the converting together to, to, to bring you down. Many of us know what that looks like, what it feels like. We know the consequences of it. So please take care of your mental health, right? Please, 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 please. And in regards to doing anything, look, there, there are times when we have to strengthen the energy to do a gazillion stuff. And there's other times where you really just need to take one step at a time, right? One thing at a time. So this um, channel that I... That, that, that came in my feed. And the person the ho is, I, I would say no more than, actually I'm awful at guessing people's age, but she looks like someone in her late 20s, maybe early 30s, or maybe older, I'm not sure. And it was all about Megan's miscarriage. Yeah, they, they, they talk about all this stuff over and over and over and over again. And I... At the beginning, I because I thought it was a Sussex friendly channel too. This person was saying pretty reasonable things and, and, and nice stuff. And then it took that 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 aggressive turn. So like a violent turn. And it was all about she faked it, she lied. Um all this barbarity. It's so, again, difficult to understand. And it gave me um, thought of, to, because you know what I thought of at the time? I thought, why would she say these things? And even if another woman, even if you thought that she might not be telling the truth, but you weren't certain, like you weren't there, so you can't be certain. You would still try and be empathetic. And the nastiness, the void of any soul of these, and mostly women, I should say, it, it, it's shocking to me. So I started thinking about feminism and the movement of feminism. Because in university, I, I, I did a couple of um, research studies and I wrote a couple of papers on, on feminism 
Um, I wrote one also on um, the queer movement. And what fascinates me with, actually, you know what? I'm not going to give it away because I'm, 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 I'm writing something right now and I'll, I'll probably do it, um, you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll broadcast it tomorrow. But it, it is about fe uh, feminism and, and, and who, who's included in, in, in that whole thing about equality and who is excluded, right? I think you folks already know the angle. <laughs> I'm sure you do. All right, enough about that. I do want to take some of your comments or read some of your comments, so let's do that right now. So you've made it this far on our intergalactic journey. So why not subscribe? Leave a comment, like, thumbs up, and share. Why not? You made it this far. And for you, yes, I'm talking to you who's so already a subscriber. Make sure you have that notification on, okay? Thank you, folks. All right, so let me start with a disclaimer. I am most likely going to mispronounce either your handle name or your name or something like that. My apologies. Um, just right out of the bat, okay? Uh, so we're taking um, some comments from uh, the podcast from yesterday. The raw commentary, the one that I couldn't stop myself from, from, from making. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Lakiva, this, this, this is all you, um, <laughs> Lakiva. Um, thank you very, very much uh, for com commenting. Uh, this one here that you've got, um, Kinsley is Tammy, Tammy Baker sister. And we all know how unrighteous Tammy Baker was. Just my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to say I agree. Uh, <laughs> Fight, fight, fight. No, 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 no. Um, I, I think you, you are, you're on the right track here. But here is where I draw the distinction. Tammy Baker, Tammy Faye Baker had charisma. That, that woman had charisma. Like I could actually watch her because I've watched her on YouTube. I, I, I can watch her. I mean, I'm fascinated by her fascinated like i want to get behind that mind and, and and just like sit down and and have a conversation right that is that is what the distinction is with that other person i'm not fascinated by anything she's she's saying there's zero charisma there and i <sighs> even though I know both of them are lying to me, like, you know, if you watch it, but I, I, I want to believe Tammy Faye. Does that sound weird? It's like, I want to believe her. I want to like go hang out and be like, I know you're lying to me, but I still want to go have coffee with you. Let's go have coffee. Now, the other one, not interested, not even a little. <laughs> Not even an ounce. All right, bring in our next set of um, comments. Thank you. Oh, April, May. April, May, so nice to see, see you um, um, commenting. Um, bravo, bravo. Sorry, I say that. Bravo. Bravo, Antonio. Well said. Thank you, April, May. It's so great to see you. Um, thank you for being here and thank, thank you for commenting. Um, Robert. So Robert, Rob, Robert is in um, La Bellissima, Bellissima Roma. Um, he's, he's, he's in Rome. One of these days, I'll, I'll tell the story of me and a few of my friends. Uh, was it three of us? I think, yeah, three of us at a Termini station in Rome and trying to get information 
about the next train leaving um, to the airport. And at this point, I had been in Rome for about, I think, three days. And my mannerisms had changed already. Like, my hands were like, Go, que pa? you know, I was mixing Spanish and English. I'm sorry, Spanish and Italian together. And I'm like, ma que cosa, huh? Que cosa me dice? <laughs> it was just... <laughs> Anyways, it was a funny situation. It wasn't funny for... I mean, we, I, I, I can look back at it and laugh. But at the moment it was happening, um, it wasn't funny. So anyways, uh, so um, Ro Robert, thank you so much for your comments and thank you for the, um, the, co the conversations we, we are, we're having. So Carolyn Graham, AKA Thomas Markle, reached out to the um, Tillman family. You know, sorry, I was just playing with my pen. If you guys, if you folks heard, heard that, um, sorry, sorry about that noise. I, I don't understand Thomas Markle. And the sad thing is that I also do understand Thomas Markle. You know, the betrayal of a family member is sometimes one of the most hurtful things. And I say family member on purpose. Because when it's parental, Oh, it's devastating. Devastating. So I can only fathom. I can't even fathom the, 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 the hurt that Megan must feel and the courage that she must have. That, that fearness to protect her children and to be certain in her conviction that when life takes its usual end of your time, when your expiry date arrives, that she does not have any questions whether she did the right thing or not. Because she's doing the right thing. She needs to protect her little ones against everything and everyone. He's no grandfather. He's no father. He's a sad excuse for anything wanting to be that. I feel pity for him because he has a great daughter. From what I've seen, from what I've, I, 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 what we know, he has a great daughter who's loved him. As she has said herself, she was a daddy's girl, and I'm going to stop because. <laughs> I can feel my throat getting all like whatever, because that kind of stuff really hits me. It, it hits me, and it hits me because I've 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 had to walk, navigate certain experiences within my own family. That to this day, it it hurts. Ooh, Marsha, Marsha, how are you? <laughs> so Marsha said, um, "Greetings, Antonio, and everyone." Raw talk indeed. Got a lot packed in. Some of the greatest lessons were never spoken. Just, oh, Marsha, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. My parents, oh, this is going to hit me, so I better like take my deep breath and breathe in. My parents, I pray and thank the Lord that I chose them to be my parents. I don't know why I chose, well, I know why I chose them. Or if I didn't have in that other world the option of choosing them, 
the Almighty that chose them for me knew why they were chosen for me. There are things that have happened in my existence that, you know, my, 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 my parents were my salvation. And I will say because of them, I'm still alive. Um, they, every resource they had, they didn't have, they moved mountains to, f to, to find what was, ha what was happening to the little kid, to their son. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here. I am... Um, I've got some wonderful parents. And uh, the funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing I will say, Marsha, is when my, when my dad speaks, my dad is one of those, those people that um, he doesn't say a lot always. <laughs> um, but there's been times in my life where I've sat down with enormous amount of fear, anguish, anxiety. And I've always been a very quiet child. I've always been very reserved into my own world and into my own, you know, because of being sick as a child, you, know, you create your own world, you create your own environment because the outside world become so painful because every week you're hooked up to machines and things and people are needles are, and so on. So for me, my, my escape was, was just inventing these, these worlds that I would sort of lose myself into. And um, so I didn't speak a lot. And some stuff was happening around me and I, I, as a child, you don't, you don't know. Um, and I, 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 I was so afraid to, to, to tell my parents uh, or, or ask them, like, is, is, this, is this right? Is it not? Anyways, I built up the courage and I was talking to my father about it, my dad. And, and, and you know, at the times where he needs to be, you know, Yoda, <laughs> wise he is and you know not not to, not to disclose some of this stuff but but he said some of the most wisest things to me and i've been i would like to say i was being shocked but that would be sort of insulting my father but deep down inside honestly i was kind of shocked i was like whoa lesson learned number 182 and uh they they they're great parents. They mind you. Listen, and I I've, I'm I'm painting here a very generous, nice picture. There are times where they drive me bananas. Okay, <laughs> bananas. <laughs> I, had, I had a discussion with my mom at the airport, and it was a discussion where I was so mad. I got so angry. <laughs> because she was being impossible, impossible. And I was like, mother, mama, please. <laughs> She's like, nope. <laughs> My mom is very stubborn. She's very stubborn. Anyways, so they, 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 they're they wonderful. Wonderful. I'm, I'm very happy to um, have had and have the good fortune of having them as my parents. All right. Whew. Next one. All right, here we are with uh, Suzy Q. Hey, um, thanks, Antonio. Well said and done. Well, thank you, thank you. I am, I'm, I'm bowing my head. I'm doing a a a, a fake curtsy, cur curtsy, curtsy. I can't say the word <laughs> um, because I can't really do that because I injured my knee the other day. And my parents keep telling me to go to the doctor and, and see what's happening. And I'm being stubborn and silly and stupid. Um, actually, this is an injury that I got during COVID. 
Um, long, long story. That's, that's for another day. Thank you so much to ZQ. It's so great to see you um, in the chat. Um, Sharon, Sharon said, thank you, Antonio. I appreciate your support for the Sussex family. Sharon Agustin, I am, what's that saying in English? Die or ride or ride or die or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't remember, but it's something and something, which basically means that I'm in it. You know, there's no taking me. The only thing that will take me away, take me away, is if the values, the mission statement of the Sussexes changes, and it's against everything I believe in, right? I, I go into spaces where or support of people where we, 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 we at least have one connection, right? Something that the base of, of you, you have a certain value, right? And when I mean by value, I mean by moral value, by the way you see the world, by the way you treat people, uh, by the things you may want to accomplish to make um, the people around you uh, better. So you, you'll have my full support and, and I'll continue to, to sort of do to, to that and, and, until the person shows me otherwise. And I've had people in my life who have, you know, I'll, I, and I, if I just one thing I'm good at, one thing I'm good at. Once I'm done, I'm done. Done. I will tell you though, I, I, I will absolutely say I, I've had to learn that the hard way. And that lesson, God sent it to me a couple of times because I did not learn it. The first time it happened, the second time. By the third, I went, okay, God, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And no, once I see things turn a certain way, I'll have a conversation with with. with with the person just to make sure I'm like, this is the direction you're taking now. This is, this is your philosophies. This is the things you, you believe in. I wish you all the best, but I'm going to get off at this stop. So Sharon Agustin, don't worry. Not like you were worried, but <laughs> I'm staying right here. Um, Robert. So this is part of the um, conversation that Robert and I were having. Ciao Antonio. Joining, um, in from from and nana nana said thanks for the update god bless you and may god bless you too thank you very much um lessons are always welcome always um i think i said in another podcast where uh part of tradition i don't know if people still do it because um in venezuela uh venezuela the um Sorry, sorry, my, 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 my phone was ringing at the same time. I was waiting for um, a message. So um, when you leave your home for anything and you live with your parents, or even when you don't live with your parents anymore, once you depart from them, you always ask for blessings. And it's, 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 it's a way of, of um, uh, recognizing each other, saying, I see you. And um, I have respect for you, and you as 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 the elder. Um, please bless me, so I can go into the world um, equipped with the things that you have taught me, and equipped with protection from, you know, the Almighty. All right. Let's see if we have one more, or two more. Let's go for it. All right, and here we are. Let's see which superstars we have now. Um, Connie, Connie Butler. Connie, how are you? Um, Connie, I really hope that you had some delicious paella in Barcelona. I have a very weird relationship with Barcelona, or as they say, Barcelona. I... If anyone believes in past lives or anything like that, uh, 
uh, the first time I was in Barcelona, I felt very odd in the city. And I just felt like I had been there before. And I had never been to Barcelona in this life anyways. And I would leave um, where I was staying with a place in my mind where I would head to. And usually, you know, I didn't use my phone or anything like that for, for direction. I, I kind of would look at it on Google Maps and go, okay, so this is, and some, I, I mean, you know, I would kind of just kind of visualize, but I would just start walking and I would end up in neighborhoods or places. And I, 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 I have this strange feeling that I've, I was there before. Like, honestly, I was there before. And when I've been to Barcelona, I have these deep, deep, deep dreams. And it's often about, I, I, I can see it kind of clear, but not completely, about my life there. So I was saying, telling this to a friend, and um, she said to me, you, so you think you had a past life here? She goes, okay, okay, okay. What, what were you? And I'm like, I used to be um, a merchant. And she's, she's like, a merchant? So you, you like, you know, I said, yeah, I, I used to be a merchant. I, I, I had this whole story. And she's like, wow. And then she goes, it's kind of tragic, though. It ends in a lot of pain. I said, I know. I'm like, what's that all about? I was like, so the city always brings this sort of nostalgia for me. And at the same time, it, it does it, it has this weird, weird vibe for me, but I love it there. My parents were there uh, before COVID happened. And um, was it your first time or second time? I don't remember. Uh, my, my dad, my, oh gosh, I shouldn't tell this, but I'm, I'm gonna say it anyways. My dad was like, yeah, I don't like that city. I was like, why? Because your mother spent so much money. <laughs> And then I speak it to my mom and she goes, I don't know what's wrong with your father. Like there was this stuff and he was always like, why are you paying for this? Why is this too expensive? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, what's wrong with him? Can, can you speak to him, please? Because like, I remember when they came back from Barcelona, it was so funny. I just laughed a lot because I thought it was the most hilarious thing. Ah, the two of them. Hey, Sharon. Um, oh, big hearts right back at you. Right back at you. Oh, Connie, sorry, I didn't, I didn't read. Um, so you said, hello, Antonio. Uh, oh my gosh, the 30. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> because Connie, right? And I'm happy that I, once in a while I can bring like comedy relief because I think sometimes I'm saying things that are funny and people do not find it funny. They're, they're like, that's not funny. And I'm like, it's not? They're like, no, it's not, Antonio. I'm like, okay. I, I don't have, like, some people just, I don't know. Anyways, I, because everything that comes out of their mouth is S-H-I-T. It's literally S-H-I-T. So it's, it has to be coming out, out of there, right? It's just, ugh, so frustrating with these people. <laughs> but thank you. I'm happy that I had you in stitches. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Once in a while, Connie. Once in a while. I think I'm funny. Um, Maxine. Maxine said, bravo, bravo. Thank you. She said, bravo, bravo. You know why I was doing that? Because of Robert. Right? If, if Robert, had, I, I'd be like, yeah, bravo, bravo. No, but I'm bravo, bravo, right? And I'm moving my hands as if I'm in Italia. Oh my goodness, stop me, please. Uh, <laughs> right? Yes, stop me, stop me. Okay, Ghislaine. Ghislaine said um, she never got a say before. Why now? This is not her fault. This is the British media. Ghislaine, please refresh my memory. So follow up with, with, with a message because I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, there is so much in my head sometimes 
that either I, I I'll, I'll I'll say something and it's 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 like I don't know a couple of words of the larger story and then I forget that I actually mentioned that or so please 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 um, let me know what you are referring to so I'll be able to kind of respond back better than what I'm doing presently okay thank you Gilen okay here we've got uh, Sonia Sonia said thank you. Sonia, my pleasure. Thank you for being here and commenting, and thank you. Hello, Maggie. Uh, okay, Maggie said, uh, thank you, Antonio. I clapped bravo, bravo. They have amnesia. They, they, they know what um, the truth is, but tell a lie instead for money and jealousy. Sad, sad people. Those people have misplaced loyalty. Oh, Maggie. Maggie goes, eh? Maggie, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, sometimes I, not sometimes, I, 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 I try my very best because I want to be a good human. It's the time I have on this planet to, to, to do as good as I can and, you know, but, no, there isn't a but there. There is, there is, I, I, I often try to have an understanding if i'm able to understand i'll give you an example and a, a lot of you folks are not going to like this so don't like don't like leave me okay <laughs> but i think about catherine the princess of wales I don't, from what we, we know, what we've heard, what we've read in Spear, don't really appreciate her, like her. You know, it's the quintessential kind of mean girl behavior. But when I go beyond the facade of the mean girl behavior and start thinking about her own stresses and her own development as a human being and the type of pressures placed on her allegedly especially from her mom as to who she should be and who she should become and as one of the royal commentators once said you know men in general or you know Kate is so popular because she's just this demure, good, good housewife, doesn't say anything at all. She knows her place. I was watching a, well, I watched part of it. Actually, not even part of it. I watched like 10 minutes of it. And they basically said in this documentary, as... Catherine and William came into the theater that she didn't sit down. She waited for him to sit first before she did. And the narrator was just in ecstasy about this, was just like she knows her place. She knows that she should not sit before him. And right there, I thought, this is the problem. I'm not saying we don't have courtesy and manners and all of that. But this, this sort of idea is a subservient idea. Look, if that's what you want, good for you. That's what, that's what the feminist movement is about. It, it's, it, it's to allow the person to be who they want to be. Right? No judgment. But I, I, I look at these reporters, I look at all this stuff that has happened that is right in front of their eyes. You know, people have to survive, I get it. And many times I, I will ask myself, when I'm confronted with, with certain situations, not on my behalf, but, but like a situation, whether it's, it's 
at work or I'm watching a movie or I'm reading something and and I ponder and I say, what, what would I do if I was faced with that situation? And I would like to think that I would be stoic and I, I, I'll do the right thing and all of that. And I'm not going to say, oh, I, I don't know. No, I do know. I absolutely know I would do the right thing. But there are exceptions. Because it would depend on the context and the situation and what's involved. Right. If I if I need to protect my family, I protect Alex and I'll, I'll I'll I will protect them. But if you are, you know, making that conscious decision, no, this is an industry I want to be in. Okay, and I'm gonna yeah okay, and I'm gonna okay. So you you are choosing that 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 is your choice. I had a friend over the other day. Um, him and I were, were, were chatting about things, and he looked at me and he goes, You're so judgmental. And I said, What? I was like, No, I'm not. He said, like, He goes, Well, you, you're like, you look like you're judging what, what I was, because he was telling me this stuff, and I was like, I, I wasn't judging, but I just kept thinking, Why would someone put themselves in, in, in that situation? Like, and I, it's based on me, right? Because all fears and stuff of what we say, judgments that we, that we um, cast on others say more about us than it says about the person we're casting this kind of judgment on. So I just said to my friend, I said, it's no, no, like, like the face you're seeing <laughs> or my reaction is not completely of, about being judgmental. It's just that for me, I'm thinking about, as you're explaining to me this, this story, I'm going, oh my gosh, I would, I would never put myself, you know, intentionally in that situation. Are you telling me this person intentionally did that just to see what the result was? I'm like, they're crazy. Anyways. Ah, okay, Maggie, that's that. What can we do? Debbie. Debbie said, amen. And another, amen. Amen, Debbie. I'll add to that, hallelujah. Did I say hallelujah? I did, didn't I? I mean, hallelujah. Hallelujah, what's wrong with me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Too many Tyler Perry movies. Um, Sarah. Sarah, how are you doing? Great. I hope you're doing well. I pray that Prince Harry receive a Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize for the Invictus Games and will make those crazy people sick. You know, they, it will make them sick. Because... Here's the thing. I think they're going to continue to do whatever they can to damage Invictus. Well, and, 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 and sort of the, what they're trying to do is, is get to Harry, right? Because the Invictus Games is so pure at heart and intention and has such light on it because it's saving lives. Let me make that very clear. It's saving lives. And when I say it's saving lives, it's saving lives. It's not just about the soldier, the veteran. It's about them and everyone else around them. I don't remember, and, and forgive me, but in um, the docuseries, there was one of um, the veterans I think he was from one of the Scandinavian countries. I'm not sure. I don't remember right now. But he was saying how, how, you know, physically, mentally damaged he was. And I believe he had daughters. And he said, you know, at times I couldn't even ha have the opportunity to spend time with my daughters. And he said, the Invictus Games give me, gave me purpose again. And it saved my life. And as he said that, I said, it also saved your daughter's life. I think he had two daughters or three, I don't remember. Because when a parent, okay, I'm not going to get into it. I, I, yeah, I guess I'm going to get emotional. Um, what happens to a family members doesn't just affect that family member. It affects the trajectory of the people 
around that family member. The way you look at life, the way you interact with people, the things you're concerned about, your fears, your hopes. Right? So, I, listen, Sarah, I, I hope so. Because Invictus Game is, is great. And it's doing so much good. So much good. Okay, so I'll try and do the other ones um, that are remaining a little bit faster. I'm um, sorry to rush. Okay, so uh, Eloge Bois says, uh, that one whose eyes never close, but the day karma will come um, to her way, then she will close. This lady hates Harry and Meghan with a passion and makes money out of that. And we would pay f for our actions, good or bad. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I am a firm believer, even though sometimes I don't see it. Even though sometimes, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm taking out, not taking out, but, but, but I, 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 I'm not around that person or that environment any longer, so I don't see whatever is happening. But I do believe that as simple as what goes around comes around. And sometimes we look at, like, as I get frustrated with this a lot, where I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, the bad people seem to be winning. Or, you know, you're in a situation and you're being honest and, and, and you know, everything you do is just, everything just coming, you know? And it could, it could get tiresome, it could get frustrating. And, you know, you go, there's no justice. There's no justice in the world. But I think sometimes we don't see it. I'm bringing my parents back again to this very quickly. And it has to do with my, with, with my mom. I, both of my parents have to have just, just great people. I was frustrated about something. Um... And this is when I was a, a, a kid. And she said to me, she goes, why are you so worried about it? And I said, because it's not fair. I said, it's not fair. Like, they're not good people. Why do all this good stuff happen to them? Right? And I'm going to get into this situation that it happened. And... My my mom was very simple in 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 her answer. She goes, she goes. Do you know? Do you believe in in God? I said yes. <laughs> she goes okay. So if 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 you believe that there is a God, do you believe then that God has plans for all of us, and 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 everything happens for a reason. I said, well, I guess so. I'm like, some of it. I don't see the reason why some people get bullied. I don't see the reason why, you know, a whole bunch of other things that were going through my head at the time. She goes, you know, you may not see it, but you don't know what turmoil that person might be living through. Whatever path they're on, whatever you think that should happen to them now may not happen to them at all. It may happen to their descendants. It may happen when they're much older. You don't know. You just leave it in the hands of God, leave it in the hands of the universe. And I was like, okay, wise woman. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, when you ferment that kind of um, behavior, when you ferment it, because each time you lie, each time you invent these things, each time you are creating a monster, and it, 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 will, it will get bigger. 
and it will start consuming its own. I have no doubt about that. All right, Kiki. Um, Kiki say, hey, Antonio, hey. That was, that was quick, right? <laughs> okay, and this is the last set. Oh, hey, there's Kiki. Um, you vote. Um, this is Sun, Daily Mail, New York Post, and the rest of them, of course. I wonder how much they paid her to ruin herself. Such, um, such a mother did. She know they used her. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. But, you know... I'll say, and I'm only going to say this because we don't completely know the state of mind. Let's let's give let's give her some gr some grace. I think, and I say that because of this. People like Carolyn, and I'm by the way, Kiki. I'm assuming you're talking about. So if, 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 I'm, if I have it wrong, just message me and say, no, that's not what I meant. Okay. <laughs> but people like Carolyn and, 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 and the rest of them, they are very astute in finding the vulnerable spot as to where to take their knife, their dagger, and stab you with it. They're very adapt at convoluting situations, at saying things and wording it in a certain way that will that elicit a certain emotion and behavior from you. I was watching info, an infomercial just because sometimes I just stare and I watch silly things. And the guy basically asked one of the attendants at the seminar and said, if a person, how much do you charge? And she said, I charge $800 an hour. He said, well, what if I say I'm not going to pay $800 an hour? I'm going to pay $300. She goes, well, sorry, that's, that's uh, I'm not going to take you as a client. And he said, well, what, why would you not take me as a client? She said, well, I'm a professional. This, this, that's how much I charge for my time. My time is important. And he said to her, he said, no, you're wrong. You're wrong because you never say no to a client. He goes, this is how you should have handled it. He said, instead of saying no, you say to her, do you want to look good on your wedding day? Do you? I bet you anything. Like, I, I, I have, do you have any exes attending? He switched it completely. He said, because the purpose of this is to make the client feel good guilty make them feel guilty make them feel bad you don't talk about your price you make them feel low that now they're willing to pay eight eight hundred dollars for your services to make them feel good about themselves and I thought, this is the problem. You know, as good as a sales pitch that is, I, I, I honestly, I sat and I went, this is the problem. This is what we have become. We just want to use each other. And we want to find that vulnerable spot to capitalize and to squeeze whatever we can out of you. I don't know when, I, I, maybe, we, sometimes I do think that I, I've, I maybe chose to ignore the, the sort of capability that humans have of doing these things. And once again, I've had to learn the hard way. Oh, I, I don't know. I find it sad that people jump to say things when they haven't done proper research or know anything, you know? I mean, someone shows up at my doorstep and starts to tell me about this or that or that. I'm not going to run my mouth. I'll say, okay, leave me your number. I'll call you if I want to talk to you. 
I'll go to do some research and try and find out, talk to some people. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kiki. Carla, Carla, Carla said, thank you, Antonio, for your great content. Very well. No, thank you. Thank you. Again, I bow and I send my cur curtsy. Cur cur I can't even say, I can't say that word, eh? I can't. Curtsy. Is that how you pronounce it? Curtsy. Cur oh, okay, moving on. Um, the journalism in media is very biased and not factual. Um, it's unbelievable. You know, I hate to say it, but you're right. You're so right. And you know, when, when I started to kind of, that, that seed was planted in my head, I remember I was watching, because I've, I've always been an, an addict to news um, since I was a child. I don't know why, but I, I was. And I was watching the news as I was doing homework, and it was at the time when there was a large influx of Middle Eastern um, people trying to flee um, Syria and the war there and, and, and all of that situation. And I think, I don't, I'm not going to name the country because I don't remember it. And I don't want to make a mistake and then um, upset anyone. But there was a reporter in the field, this country had started to build um, fences with barbed wires and stuff like that. And I think there was this like a, a little entry thing, so wanted to cut out something, and so this mass amount of people. When I say I'm not going to say mass, but but the people started kind of running towards, you know, to get into that side, the other side, where you know, where I think they. They were able then to, to be in EU um, land and be able to um, claim asylum. And the reporter, oh, this is hard. I'm so sorry. I've been trying not to get emotional, but this is this. I I can see it. I, I am seeing it right now, and it's 